Somebody need to be delivered today. Somebody need to be set free. Somebody strung out on drugs. Somebody is in, uh, in a situation of abuse. So there are some children that are in some dangerous environments. And they need God to intervene. And a lot of folks don't know how to call on the Lord. Some folks feel they're not worthy enough. Hallelujah to God. But we know that we can go to God on behalf of our brothers and sisters. Hallelujah. Do I have any help in here this morning? Do I have any help in here this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. Oh, God, we thank you. We praise your name, Lord. First of all, we come to say thank you. We come to God. We come to say thank you. We come to God. We come to say thank you. We come to do it. We come to make you all. We come to magnify you. We come to honor to make you bigger. Oh God, you are great. And great and to be praised. In the city of our God. Thank <laughs> you.
Danke.
Second Timothy chapter one. Only gonna read just one verse. Second Timothy chapter one. Verse number seven. Second Timothy chapter one. Verse number seven. Second Timothy chapter one. Verse number seven. Everybody got it? Second Timothy chapter one, verse number seven. It says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and of love and of a sound mind. You may be seated. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. Amen. And we're grateful to the Lord today. We are honored to be back in the house of the Lord one more time. For God is a good God. Yes, He is. And He's worthy of all the praise. Greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, to our ministerial staff and to our mothers, men and our women, and youth, those that are present. We thank God for Facebook Live, um, TV broadcast, Spotify, and all of the networks that is helping us get the gospel of Jesus Christ out into the world. Thank God for, um, I see some faces today. I know the young man, amen, he's been here before, but we thank God for the young lady that's here today. Can we give a praise for her? I bless you. Amen. For coming and worshiping with us on today. Amen. Uh, so we're always grateful to see new faces. Amen. Come by and worship with us in the beauty of holiness. Amen. Amen. You want to introduce yourself? Towards our 20 year, 
20 year crossing over Amen. into a new chapter in the life of this ministry. Yeah. And this is why the teachings are getting more and more intense because God is preparing us um, for what's next. Also, a lot of the things that we see going on in the world, in the nation, the Word of God, when it is rightly divided, it's going to be more challenging and more intense because the Word is preparing you for what's to come that has not yet happened yet. And this is why we can no longer expect God to accept average. Um, accept, you know, what we would accept. God does not accept what we would look the other way. We, we act as if we don't see it. Or we show favoritism. God is not showing favoritism in this last day. He requires of us what he has put in us. When you are exposed to greater, you are expected to produce greater. When you are exposed to the best, you are expected to produce the best. You cannot benefit from the best and not produce the best. See, this is this. This is what we have to understand going in. We have to understand going into the army of the Lord is not going to be easy. Everybody is not going to like you. Don't expect them to. See? But at least they ought to respect your relationship with God. See? God did not call us to build a fan club. He did not call us to chase people to beg them to be our friend. He called us to be like huh? He called us to be the salt of the earth. We are the salt of the earth. We are the light of the world. We are supposed to be different. We are supposed to be the same like everybody else. When we have come out of darkness, the chosen generation is the generation that is light. We exemplify, we represent Christ Jesus and we are not ashamed. We make it known everywhere we go. We are not ashamed to say I'm saved and I don't do that. I'm saved and I don't participate in that. I tell our young folk all the time, there's nothing wrong with being virgin. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. It, it, it's, it's something wrong when somebody can walk up to you and ask you, what is your body count? That's right. And these, yes. That's right. There are individuals who are asked that there are platforms on social media. Yes. Who are making news. That's right. Off of walking up to people, total strangers. And say, what is your body count? And they just blatantly, openly, proudly say, six, seven, ten. And not realizing that your body is one of the most precious commodities. The Bible said, if we don't take care of the body, if we don't take care of the temple, we will be destroyed. You don't like that. Yeah. So, 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 even though you feel the freedom to do the things that you do, just know that there will be an account given one day. Yeah. And so, it is the church, it is our job, it is the preacher's job to tell men and women that you have something precious in your possession and it is called your body. Yeah. That's why the Bible said. We present our bodies a living sacrifice. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. I'm coming to Psalms 103. Y'all know how the Lord takes me sometimes. I, 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 beseech, I beseech you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, that you present your body, your body, 
Don't worry about everybody else's body. The, your body. You are responsible. You ain't responsible for her body. You ain't responsible for his body. You're responsible for your body. And so that means that whatever somebody chooses to do with their body does not obligate you to do the same thing with your body. You got to keep your body. You got to keep your body. You, you got to keep your body where it can be presented. You got to present your body a living sacrifice. Hallelujah to God. See, this is God's body. So if anybody going to get the use of this body, it's going to be God. I'm not going to give my body to sin all my life. And then when I get old and, and, the, and death is knocking on my door, now I'm ready to live for the Lord. No parties don't last. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Say that. Good times, all of that. Right. You see? Oh, yeah. Things change. Right. Hallelujah. That things you do, that things you do when you're young, and that things that a lot of us did when we were young, we, we older now, and you look back and you wish you hadn't have never did that. Amen. Amen. So what you do today will remind you tomorrow. There's a memory that comes with every action. <laughs> See, y'all ain't saying that. See, in order for it to become a memory, it had to have happened. See, so, so you, in order to remember something, it, it had to have taken place. That's right. See, y'all ain't saying that. So, there's a memory that comes with every action. Oh, I asked God to forgive me. I'm not, it's over. Oh, 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 You might be forgiven. But you didn't forget. And, and the truth of the matter is, everybody, everybody is just not that, not that willing to, to allow you to forget. That's right. That's right. That's right. Some folk, every time you run into them, you remember when we used to. That's why some of you run from certain folks. Because all they got is memories. They ain't got good. They, they don't have good news. They don't have. Uh, I can see a change in you. Uh oh. They don't have. Are you still saved? Are you still living for God? Are you still hanging on? Are you still holding on to God's unchanging hand? No. They don't have anything to say on that line. All they gotta say is, uh, "You remember when we used to." Uh, you miss me? Uh oh, see, some of y'all can't say nothing. Hallelujah to God. Don't you miss me? You know, it's a funny thing. You know, I just, I was just thinking about you the other day and look at fate. <laughs> y'all understand that? Hallelujah to God. What are the odds that we would run into each other in Walmart? I wasn't even coming to this this side of town, and I ended up over here at this particular restaurant. <laughs> See y'all ain't saying that. Hallelujah to God. See you got to you got to know that there has been a change. That's right. That's right. See you got to know. Don't put the responsibility on other people to tell you you have changed. Hallelujah to God. Yes, a preacher take a lot out of you. This is equivalent to an eight hour job. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And so Psalms 103 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. God has been good to us, hasn't God's been good to us, hasn't he? Amen. There, 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 there are cars we drive. That's right. There are houses.
problems we're living in, yes. and the jobs we have. You see, this is why this is why it should never it should never be no question uh, the fact that what we're going to do and where we're going to be when it comes to the Lord's day. Because if the Lord bless you with a house, you gonna stay in it to watch church. You gonna you gonna you gonna if God bless you with a car. You gonna you gonna drive it to go everywhere that you wanna go, but you can't come to the house of the Lord. I can't get no help in you. He bless you with a job to be able to pay your bills, and, and now you make an excuse of not to come to the church. Hallelujah. But we can go out of town, we can go everywhere. See, see, this this has been the plot of the enemy all along. I've been preaching this, I've been telling us this, but see, see when see when we don't have an end to hear what the spirit has said to the church, but we're looking for a reason to get offended, we will miss the warnings of God. I've been saying this all along. For the last three, four, five years, even as it relates to the pandemic, it was the trick of the enemy yeah. to make the church non-essential. That's right. That's right. That's right. Unnecessary. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. With all the members we got, it's now, now we are, we are, we are, we are burning, we are converting, we are converting, we are, we are being converted into virtual. When the Bible said to forsake not the assembly of ourselves together as a matter of something, the devil wants to isolate you because your inheritance is among them that are sanctified. And the more you miss church, the easier it's going to become. For long, we ain't going to see you no more. I can't get no help. Yeah, yeah, we ain't gonna see you no more. And, 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 and we ain't gonna see you no more, but that's what the devil does. He wants to pull you. He wants to draw you. He wants to seduce you. See, it's hard for the devil to seduce you when you're among sanctified people. When you're among folk that's in the presence of God and, and know the word and know how to call on Jesus and know the We don't want to be accountable. Forget not all his benefits. Look how Lord, look how good the Lord did good to you. We heard our sister right there just graduated from college. That's a blessing right now. That's a blessing right now. Oh, that's a blessing right now. Now, now she did. Watch this. Now she did. She's already walking with Christ. So now what she what she does with the degree, God, this your degree. Hallelujah to God. And see, see, little sister, God's going to bless you, hallelujah, as long as you keep him first. Amen. The sky is the limit. Now what folk do, they get blessed and they go back to their old ways. Put God back on the back burner. I can't get no help. I can't get no help in here. And see, and see, and see, this is what this is what the Bible said. I'm giving y'all Bible. Amen. You can't get mad at me. That's this right. is the Bible. It says, it says, it says, it says, he says, bless the Lord out of my soul and forget not all. See, the Bible is telling us, don't you forget. Amen. That's right. That's our responsibility. Yes. Forget. Yes. You ever done something for people? And when they get on their feet, We've all we've always been. Amen. Yes. And if some of us be honest, totally honest, we've been the one who used people too. Yes. Now, I can't put my hand up on that one. I, I just rather go without. I, I I just it's just something in that just won't let me use nobody and take advantage of no. I'm sorry, y'all. I can't get no help in here. But I, I I'm guilty of letting myself be taken advantage of and people use me and all of that. And I knew they were using me. I knew they were taking advantage of me. But it's just something in me just wouldn't. I just can't. I, I, I'd rather really go out and, 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 and cut some grass or something. I, my mentality was a little different. Even when I was younger, 
even to, to, to where I am right now. I just, if I don't need it, I don't want it. I don't want it. If I don't need it, I don't want it. Some of us, some of us will have more money if we quit buying what we don't need. <laughs> we'll be able to save something. Now that's a good teacher. That's a good nugget right there. Huh? Huh? Savings account is for people that don't have spending problems. Amen. That's right. Amen. That might work. It's broken. It's all. Are we users or whatever? I mean, don't, don't, don't be no users. Don't be no users. Don't, don't take advantage of people right. because they are nice. That's right. Amen. Sometimes we take advantage of people because they're being nice. That's it. That's right. Yes, sir. That's their personality. Yeah. That's who they are. Right. They're nice. They're not selfish. That's right. That's right. So you cannot be selfish taking advantage of niceness. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Let me move on because y'all, I can tell y'all don't like my teaching. Now. I can tell it's a little kickback going on, but that's all right. That's all right. I, I'm gonna keep right on standing on the promises of God. Amen. It says. It says. Um, it says. Um, forget not all his benefits. I told you I'm not going to finish all this today. Forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thy iniquities. See there? Look at what, look at what he had done. See, that right there is enough to make me serve for the rest of my life. I don't have to get a check in the mail. I don't have to get all of that. I don't have to, I don't have to, I don't have to have all of this and all of that. All of that's fine. If you got it, praise God. But this right here is enough to cause me to serve him for the rest of my days without any excuses. Three claps. Wow. Now <laughs> watch this. Watch this. Who forgive it? All. All of my demons. Who heal it? All of my diseases. Diseases is not just sicknesses. The prefix dis, we know it, means to undo. So this ease to undo your ease. You have no peace. You have no ability to get somewhere and be comfortable in your own mind. You're always troubled. You're always disturbed. You're always dealing with some type of negative emotion. You're being tormented by one thing or another. But but he says, who 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 heal it? Who forgive it? All thy iniquities and who heal it? Watch this. That wants us to be uneasy. Oh, Any and everything that is trying to take away our peace. God has healed us from those things. So my question is, why don't we have peace as children of God? How can you know that? Like Hallelujah to God. Why? Gone. Because there's not a shortage of peace. Hmm. Bless his name. Because he is the prince of peace. And if the prince of peace is living on the inside of you, there ought not be a shortage of peace in your life. with you. 
And somebody say, I, I got to have peace about it. You ain't going to have no peace about anything that's outside of God's will. Right. Hallelujah. See, he healed all of our diseases. Not just cancer. Not just diabetes. Not just all kinds of physical ailments. And yet God has healed some folk from all of these things. Has it brought about a change? I can't get no help. He let you live. He didn't let you live for you to stay the same. Oh my God. If God raises you up from the bed of affliction, He is raising you up for His glory, number one. And He, but, but secondly, He's raising you up because He's giving you another chance to do what He told you to do the first time. Oh, y'all not here with me. Y'all not here with me. There's a payment coming in 30 days. 
working with no mechanism. Anything that you got financed is due a payment every month. That's right. That's right. So everything you do, it comes with a payment. You don't need more than attention when that payment is due. So y'all understand that. Come on here. When you if anybody ain't got a car payment, you, you can't pay your car payment with the lack of attention you didn't get. <laughs> Guess what? Your insurance is due too. <laughs> now, now watch this. We may not want to pay. But if we're going to keep, good God, oh bless his name, if we're going to keep what we have, we got to do what is required. Now watch this. I might not even get to the other scriptures today. That's okay. I'm right where I need to be. Who forgiven all thy iniquities? Y'all get that thing out of here. Who forgiven all thy iniquities? Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who redeemeth? Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. See, this is why we shouldn't have to be pumped. <laughs> we shouldn't have to be crying. We shouldn't have to have a prophecy to come to make us praise the Lord. Because the fact that I've been redeemed, I've been bought back. I've been in a hostage situation. The devil had us hostage with no plans to turn us loose. His plan was to kill, steal, and destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have life and that will put it. So Jesus came to pay the ransom with his blood. See? Thank you, Lord. We are redeemed. Right. We have been redeemed. See, we've been we've been bought with a price. Yeah. Yes, sir. I said we've been bought. See, 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 we've been bought not with money, but we've been bought. With blood. See, he, 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 he purchased us, Brother Kadrilla, with his blood. <laughs> see, see, without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sin. There would be no redemption if he didn't shed his blood. of what Jesus went through to save them. And this is why it's so hard for them to get saved. In spite of all the hypocritical Christians. Scratch all the debt. Because the truth of the matter is that's, that, that's, that's really no excuse why you ain't saved. That's right. Because I'm saved, many of you are saved, yeah. and there's still some people that, that are still hypocritical. Right. Amen. <laughs> uh, well, you, you got to pray for the hypocrite yes. that they get it right, Amen. but they ain't going to stop me from being saved. That's right. Amen. See, see how I just took away all of that right there? Yes. But you know why a lot of folks don't want God? Because they lack understanding of what He did. They have no clue of the ransom, the power of redemption. See, 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 watch this. That's why resurrection was important. Because Jesus could have went to the cross. And he could have been crucified. And he could have been whipped 39 times. And the crown of thorns 
could have been on this head, right? He could have went through all of that. But if he never got up, there would be no redemption. See, y'all are saying that. See, 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 see. That's what separates Jesus from all the other dollars. They didn't get up. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. There was evidence of their bones still in the grave. But nobody can find Jesus' bone. Hallelujah. They got searched all over and they can't find no bones. Why? Because he got up. of Christ was manifested in the resurrection. Hallelujah. Let me show you what redemption looked like. Lazarus come forth. And he that was dead for four days and four nights wrapped in grave clothes begin to hop out of the tomb and Jesus said loose it <laughs> see that's redemption loose it when you're bound but Jesus commands you to be loose that is the that's the redemption y'all ain't never been bound before y'all ain't never been y'all ain't never been hindered y'all ain't never Let him go. Let him go. Y'all ain't hearing me. Don't just lose him. But let him go. Cause y'all might. Y'all still ain't got it. Because see, see, we shout off of being loose. But yet you can be loose and still be enslaved. Cause looseness simply means they took the bandage off of you. But you're still hanging at the graveyard. Can't get no Loose, let them go means I change location. So deliverance causes you to change location. When you are truly delivered, your location changes. When you're truly delivered and you're truly healed, your location changes. You don't hang out no more at pity party view. Let me go. What you talking about? Your past won't let you go. You ain't really loose. I can't get no help in you. Because when God loose you from them, they ain't got no choice but to quit calling you. And quit texting you. And quit DMing you. And quit emailing you. Look at y'all looking at me.
They already been released. But if you got it in the church properly, bring it back. Amen. 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 You got it that belong to the church. Go ahead and turn it in. Because ain't nobody got time to play games with you. You can't, you can't say you're a member here but don't want to come here. You need to go where you need to go. You need to go where you want to go. Don't, don't call yourself a part of this church, but then when things don't go your way and you stay away from church, that's not being connected. See, what preachers need to do this. We can clean house this way. Amen. Amen. We can we clean house this way if we just if we just if we just if we just address the problem and quit walking on eggshells around. Then they need it. You will get the drama out of your life if you just clean it up. Confront it. That's it. Yes, a lot. Enough is enough. You're not adding to my life. I'm drained every time you come around. You make me upset. I have peace until you call. I can't get no help in here. Everything be running so smooth until I hear from you. Now, some, some ain't clicking. All cylinders ain't clicking. I'm trying to go with God. You trying to pull me to the left. You trying to pull me to the right. Uh oh, you trying to pull me to you. Why don't you want God like me? Oh. Then you gotta ask the question, what you want with me if you don't want God like me? Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Yes. See y'all, y'all not saying that. Y'all not saying that. It says, it says, who forgiven all thy iniquities, who healed all thy diseases, who redeemed thy life from destruction. Who crowned thee with love and kindness and tender mercies. See, who redeemed our life from destruction? I'm not done with that. Who, who redeemed our life from destruction? We don't even have a clue of all the unseen destruction. We have no idea of all the unseen danger that God has protected us from. My God. Yes, Lord. We have no clue. I dare, I dare to say there is more unseen danger unseen. that we have survived than seen. And either to either to either to the degree, because all danger don't present itself to be dangerous. My Lord. That's why I say a lot of it is unseen. Because there were some things that showed up in the form of a compliment. But it was unseen danger. It, 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 was, it was something that showed up as help, as assistance, as a, a friend. It was disguised in that form. But what it really was was danger unseen. See, you ain't you ain't you teacher, you teacher. How many how many how many opportunities came to us and, and, and wait a minute and we took them. How many doors was open and we walked through them? Believing it was God. See, you don't understand. I can't get no help now. See, you don't want to be honest. Hallelujah to God. How many people did you trust only to discover they were dangerous? God, God, God. Huh? So he redeemed it. He rescued. He delivered. He he came and got us back from the hands of the destruction. <laughs> all of them accidents, all of them near life death experiences, all of those times that we didn't even know somebody 
it was plotting to get us. Because for some people, they think everybody like them. I don't know. Right. Yeah, no. they, they must be in La La Land or something. Huh? Check this out. Destruction. Destruction is destructible. It has the a potential and the ability to destroy us. Destruction. When, 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 it didn't say construction. See, destruction is the opposite of construction. Construction is what you build. Destruction is what you tear. Yes, yes. It's what you demolish. It's what you tear. Uh oh. Hello. Yes. Hello. Yes. Uh oh. This is the, this is for the mature people only. What you told them. Yes. We can shout when it's somebody else. If, if somebody else is doing all the demolition. All we can say. But when we are the ones that messed it up for ourselves, He redeemed us from us. He saved us from our own self. We thought we knew that. We thought we knew what to do. And God said, Let me deliver you before you destroy you. Let me come and get you. Oh! <laughs> 
time you ain't tell me to fix you. Uh oh. This is the kind of woman I want, but yet you won't let him fix you. Uh oh, well. How you expect that relationship to last and work when you never change, but it they got to come, they got to come the way you want. Today. This kind of job I want. I want to make this amount of money. Huh. And you can't even be faithful with the job you got. Come on here today. You can't even be consistent and tithing with the income you get. Oh, Lord. Yes, sir. Man, please. See, no, no, it's the truth, you know, because a lot of the teachers are out here teaching us this that we have, we have the power of it to stay. What we want. No, 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 no. I thought the Bible said, He'll give you desire of your heart. See, you didn't read the verses before. Commit thy way to the Lord. See, when you commit your way to the Lord, it will no longer be your desires. When you commit your way, His way, His desires will become yours. Because so all the desires He will give you is what He has desired for you. See, see, we we got we got these wish lists like God the Santa Claus, like he's the genie in the lamp, and so we rub the lamp with a praise, and God's supposed to just ah uh -uh, no no the Bible said he inhabits the praises of his people. Now what the praise is not to give God to do for you. Praise is designed to be God to come and be with you. And in a lot of cases, 
his sons. See, this is what we do. When God requires us to give up us, we start blaming people around us. That's right. For being the problem. Yes. Or we remove ourselves from certain places, trying to make the place feel like they're the problem. Or we twist what God says to us to justify what we want to do all along. It's just one of those three. That's just like what God said last week. Don't be weight in the atmosphere. A person that don't want to come to church, they will take that and twist it and say, well, you, you said, not with me, it was God. When you said don't come to church, we're going to be weight. Now you don't want to come no way. So don't twist what God said to try to fit your narrative of what you want to do all along. Good God Almighty. So you mean to tell me you choose to be awake so you can stay home? So you don't want to get free so you can bring God praise? That don't sound right. Y'all hear what I'm saying? But the enemy will always give ideas to those that want to rebel anyway. Mm. Okay, I, I prove it. I prove it to you. I prove it to you. And you use me, because I use some of y'all. We may not see some more folks come to the moment. <laughs> Let me use me. That's See, you gotta go to it. You gotta grow up sometime. <laughs> and you can't you gotta stop making everything be about you. So let me use me. There were things that where my parents told us, me and my brothers, don't do this and so. Well, if we really wanted to do it, we know what mom and dad is saying. But we began to figure out ways to do it without mom and daddy knowing. See, I was saying that. See, that's where that manipulation comes in at. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now watch this. The reason why what caused and prompted us to figure out ways to do it anyway was the fact that we didn't want to obey what they said don't do. Amen. So guess what? We begin to plot. This is what I need you to do. I need you to leave the back window open. I can see it all right now. I need you to leave the back window open and don't tell mama and daddy that the window is open. Because I'm speaking out. But I need you to be awake around a certain time to let me back in. See, 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 see what happens is you already made up your mind what you're going to do. But you're not you are not bold enough to go to mom and dad and say, I'm going to do it anyway. Because you know the consequence of mom and dad. So what you do, you find a way, I, we find a way to rebel. But guess what? You still end up getting caught. Yes, right. Yes, right. Yes, right. See, I, I had to come down because it's, it's a union time. Uh, you still end up getting caught because the rules rule. Uh, and if you don't live in this house, the rules rule. See, y'all are saying. See y'all are saying. What happened was somebody overslept, <laughs> and uh, when certain folks get to sleeping good, a little tap will wake them up. So the louder the tap, the greater the noise. I can't get those up in here. And when you begin to tap loud. Begin to listen. I can't get 
no help. I can't get no help. And not only do you not wake up the watchman, you don't wake the watchman, but you wake up the rule keeper. I'm here to serve notice. The rule keeper is awake. So what you try to do ain't gonna work. Hallelujah to God. The saints are gonna survive this. The people of God are gonna get the victory anyway. I'm talking to the devil on y'all behalf. Y'all excuse me. So it doesn't matter, Mr. Devil, what you plot to do and plan to do against the people. It ain't gonna work. Oh, I have some. Ain't gonna work. It ain't gonna work. The safest thing for us to do is obey God. Come in submission to the will of God for your life. That's the safest thing you can do. Because change is required to go to the next level. You cannot continue to do the same things that you've been doing and expecting different results. Change. As a matter of fact, we're changing without our permission. Guess what? You change. I'm proving it. Today you are a day old. Guess what? It's some bread coming in your hair. You can die all you want. It's coming. The more you live, the more it's going to turn soft and pale. Some of it ain't going to turn. Some of it, some of it going to say, peace out. I'm leaving. My time is up. You're changing. Yeah. You don't think your body's changing? Right. Look at your five-year-old picture. Yes, sir. Look at your picture from 16, yes, sir. 23, yeah. 31. Yeah. You don't look the same. Right. You change yeah. without your control. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't, ain't, ain't nobody, ain't nobody gonna change me. Change is changing you. <laughs> I know you don't see that bag under that left eye. <laughs> it's, 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 it's an infancy stage. It's, 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 it's developing. You don't see that wrinkle, but it's coming in. It's blending in. See, you don't see it. Because you smile a lot. See, you, you try to hide. Y'all see it? It's there. That extra chin. It's coming in. You're getting slow. You used to walk. You used to walk fast. You ain't walking fast enough. What you waiting on to get up? <laughs> What's the hold up here? Come on. You're advertising the change. What you love to eat, like to eat, now all of a sudden, man, it is. I rode by McDonald's yesterday. Ugh. Because you're changing. See, I want to live. I want to I wanna be healthy. So those places, I got to pass time. I got I to gotta keep driving. I, I can't. I, I went to Popeye the other day and now the grease started to turn me off. Yeah. 
She can look so good. Yes. But it's just the taste of that grease is yes. starting to turn me off. Now, now my body, my body is telling me, hey, listen, no more. We need to change our diet. Amen. A lot of times we don't listen to our bodies. Our bodies are telling us, stop eating that. Stop buying all those sweets and them cookies. Take them out your mug. Now you can't blame the sweets. The sweets don't jump in your back. Box of oatmeal cookies, they're not jumping in your <laughs> Them sodas and things, they didn't jump in your basket and jump into your refrigerator. Your right. refrigerator. You bought it. You bought it out of the store, into the car, into the house. Am I teaching good? Yes, huh? You gotta see, change is happening. Your children is the proof that you change because they're getting older. You watching them grow up right in, right before your eyes. So if they get older, so are you. Right? Amen. Change it, man. We can't stop. Put a little salt on that, man. Put a little salt on that. Amen. Yeah, we, we don't bring no we don't bring no pickles in here. They try to slip one in Wednesday night. I had to I said, you can't be paying a lot of with that. Fun around here. Amen. I'm talking to our, our, our little sister back there. You know that young man's sister's out here? You do? You know? Boy, he just made himself comfortable, didn't he? Wow. <laughs> Jeez, I thought the way the man sat, sat down was out, I thought he knew you. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Right in the road. Hey, man, don't, don't mind me, man. I'm just being pastor. You know that. So, uh, so we 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 thank God for all. Did y'all get a word today? Did y'all get a word today? Come on, y'all. Let's 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 stay spiritual. I got all for a bit. Let's stay spiritual because I'm trying to equip us. Trying to equip us Amen. for what's coming. Amen. Something is coming. Something is coming. And it's the trick of the enemy yes. to get people out of the church. Amen. That's the last place that you need to be leaving in times like these. Amen. It's all the trick of the enemy. I've been telling them for five years. It's the trick of the enemy to isolate the people of God. Scattered the sheep. Amen. Scattered. Sheep are scattered. Yes. People are scattered. They not. People don't even talk about God no more. No. Even the people that are supposed to represent God, they ain't talking about God no more. People are ashamed to tell people they say. Yes. I see it all the time. The first ask you, are you a Christian? Uh, uh, why? Why? Yes. Yes, I am. Yes. If you believe in Jesus, absolutely. Yes. I witnessed this literally the other day. Somebody asked the person that I know that claims to be a believer. The question asked, Are you a Christian? Huh? Why are you asking me that? And the person said, I just want to know. I heard you was a Christian. Are you a Christian? I mean, I'm trying to figure out what, what, what is that? I mean, why is that question offending you? Why? Are you or aren't you? Your answer should have been, yes, I am. Yes, I'm a Christian. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. For it is the power of God and salvation. And then the response, are you a Christian? And if they would have said no, that would have been your door to witness to them. Sometimes people just want to see how committed you are to what you claim. Sometimes they just want to see, are you truly a woman of God? Are you truly a man of God? You say you are, let's see. And sometimes they just want to 
They just want to test to see. They just want to test you to see what your response will be. Because see, watch this. Believe it or not, God believes one. But people don't heard you. See, people hear about you before they approach you. Whether good or bad. They already done heard something about you. That's the whole purpose of approaching. Because they want to see for themselves. Is it true what they heard about you? You don't understand that you can't afford to not be who you say you are. Amen. Amen. <sighs> See, smiling, just smiling and grinning ain't getting it no more. Folk gonna watch you. They gonna watch you. They gonna watch you. I, 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 I share. I gotta go home Monday night. I shared with y'all that there were was, was some people that was watching back to the Bible for three years. Three years. And they was, guess what they were looking for? Consistency. Three years they watched back to the Bible. They was looking to see, was I going to change the message? Because they used to keep preaching one thing today. And then compromise and preach something else two weeks later. And since everything on social media, they got you dead to rights because all they got to do is go in your archive and say, wait a minute, now see, you was preaching against this and now you're now you, now you speaking up for this? What's, what's going on with that? You're not consistent. And people are not going to follow inconsistency. It's something wrong when you are a consistent person, and people don't want to be around you. What that shows is they're not consistent. And your consistency convicts them. It holds them accountable. So they are inconsistent. You can't, you can't follow a consistent leader wholeheartedly if you are inconsistent people. And that's what we talked about on Wednesday night. You got to be consistent. You got to be a consistent person if you want to be consistent in what you do. You can't be consistent in what you do if you're not consistent in who you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let me let me let me go ahead and because you you know I want y'all to keep your joy. I want you to keep your blessing because you know glory is coming. Greater is coming. I don't want you to lose your You know what I'm saying? And you know, sometimes when that, when that, when that glory, when that glory hit, when that glory hit, and that greater is coming. You know, sometimes that means we got to make some changes. We got to make some adjustments. Greater just ain't coming. Greater don't require you to be greater. Amen. And then you got to get out of that comfort zone. You got, to, you got to quit sleeping on the job. So the Amen. devil is coming on your post. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Amen. 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 So Y'all mark it down. What's the date? June the 6th. Mark it down. God is preparing us. How many more months we got? Till October. Till August, September. We got four more months. Amen. Change is coming. Yeah. It's happening. You understand? You gotta keep moving forward. You gotta keep moving forward because we got greater things ahead of us. And it ain't just a name. It's greater. To whom much is given, what? Much is required. Much is required. It's not just a name. It's a responsibility. It's 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 another way of glory. It's another level of responsibility. Yes. We got work to do. Because Jesus is coming. Yes. Yes. And I don't know about you, but I don't want him to tell me depart from me. Right. I never knew you. Yes. Father, we thank you today. We praise you for these uh, people. Thank you for how you move. Thank you, Lord, for the saints. We thank you, Lord, for how you just poured out today. Your word came forth. Your word came to minister to us. 
have your way. Touch us, God. Heal, deliver, set free. We thank you, God, for the assignment that you gave to us this morning to pray for souls and to stand in the gap. We thank you for how you move in the service. And we believe, we know that you're going to answer the prayers and you're going to honor what we pray because we pray your will and your word. And we follow your instructions. Touch, Lord. Touch each and every one, God, that is representing here today. Touch their families, their siblings, their friends. God, you've already ordered our steps. Allow your spirit to lead us and guide us into those steps as that's already been ordered. Thank you for everything we've been through. Thank you for every trial, every storm, every circumstance, every tribulation, all the pain that we have endured, all the afflictions, all the tears that we've cried. Oh God, even the, to the loss of loved ones, you brought us through. Sicknesses and diseases. Don't allow us to forget your benefits. Don't allow us to forget that it was you that blessed us and it was you that opened up the doors and made the way for us. Have your way. We love you and we thank you. Continue to move upon, oh God, our young sister that came today. We pray for her, God, that you would touch her, God. Continue to bless her. Leading God, oh God, you've already set a path, a plan for her life. We pray for her family. We pray, God, for those that are connected to her, her friends, and those that are around her. Continue to move in Jesus' name. We love you, God. Those that are watching, those that are listening, who may not know you as Lord and Savior, we ask that you will save today, heal today, set free by the power of God. Continue to strengthen us for the journey. Prepare us for your coming. And prepare us for the greater. In Jesus' name. Lord, I've done what you told me to do. And I said what you told me to say. Get the glory out of it all. Restore the virtue back in me, I pray. We count it done. In Jesus' name, thank God. Thank God. Amen. Can we give the rest of praise? Oh, yeah. 
Oh, precious is that flow that makes us white as snow. No other fountain, nothing but the blood of Jesus. It reaches to the highest mountain, flows to the lowest valley. The blood that gives us strength from day to day, and it will never lose its power. And we thank God for that. Amen. We praise the Lord for his goodness and his mercy for a great day today. Amen. Bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. Got to meet some new people. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. And you, you already know you're welcome to come back and worship with us at any time. Welcome. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you, young lady. You really, really blessed us today. And we're happy and excited for you. Graduating. Amen. Amen. Thank God for you. Amen. And of course, it's good to see our sister back today. She, 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 she made us a right home last week. And she was shouting and praising God and <laughs> getting into the word just like she did today. Amen. Amen. Help the Holy Ghost. Yes. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord. She came along with Minister Hodges. Yes. Amen. Thank God. Amen. Thank God that um, God, God is working things out. Saints can come to church. Amen. God is everything you And it's so good to see all of you. Amen. The mothers and the ministerial staff and the men and everybody. Not only different colors, the white and the black. You know, we, we as the ministers, we wear the uh, preachers, we wear the black and the ladies. And all of y'all colors just blend right in. Even down to all of our sisters. They got on their blues. And they uh, all of the different colors. Amen. So we thank God. Thank God for Brother Cash. Cash me to be in the house today. Amen. That's the fourth, fourth generation. Fourth generation. And I, I want to know. That's an honor. Is it third or fourth? Fourth generation. Amen. That's a fourth generation. My father, my father's gone on. But his name lives on. Amen. That's 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 an awesome name. Living on. Amen. So we thank the Lord for that and those that are let's continue to pray for all the bereaved families and those that lost loved ones and those that are sick and shedding. Amen. We don't have to say that anymore. Amen. About Minister Hines. <laughs> we don't have to say that anymore. <laughs> uh -uh. We don't have to say that anymore. The Lord the Lord has brought him back to church. Amen. We've been going to be back to church for a long time. I don't know how many times, I don't know how many times we had the minister on the phone. She would be she be crying to come to church. Well, that's hard to find. Huh? She be crying. I just want to get back in church. And she just break out crying. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Had, to, had to encourage her. Yeah. Just keep on, keep on. Hold on. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Amen. 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 You got to encourage the saints that want to come. Right. Right. Amen. She wanted to be in church. Amen. But her body, you know, going through the different changes and things and surgeries and things. So God is working that out too. Amen. All about the disease. Yes. 
Amen. So y'all have a great day today. Get you some rest. Get you something good to eat. Enjoy the rest of your day. Amen. Amen. Uh, can we have your birthday? Yes, sir. On tomorrow, our very own minister, Lynette Payne, will turn on your wife on tomorrow. Amen. All right.